Hi there. Today we're going to look at this paper, Curiosity Driven Exploration by Self-Supervised Prediction. Um, it's a relatively short idea, so it shouldn't take too long. So the fundamental idea of the paper um, is to tackle the reward, uh, the reward sparseness problem in reinforcement learning. Uh, for example, if you have a Super Mario game like here, and there's a number of ways you can think of the reward, but one way you could formulate it is that you simply get kind of a plus one reward when you finish the game, like, or the level. Let's say you finish the level, um, you get plus one. If you die or don't make it in time, um, you get negative one. I think there's no way to not make it in. Oh yeah, there's actually, there's a time limit. Um, so the, the problem here is that your algorithm kind of needs to learn to make things now such that it gets to the end of the level but the reward is only at the end of the level so basically step by step it has, it has no signal to go on because the reward is always zero and it kind of needs to learn these long-range dependencies and that's notoriously hard in reinforcement learning to step by step learn actions that kind of maximize some very long-term goal so you can also think of a game of chess where your reward is going to be whether you win or lose at the end, but step by step, you, it's kind of this, the reward is 50-ish steps away. So you have no way of, of kind of step by step optimizing your actions uh, in a meaningful manner. Um, so the, there are many ways to get around this. One way that people have done is what's called reward shaping. Um, and reward shaping is you're trying to introduce additional rewards kind of as a, as a designer of the algorithm that you know are kind of good or helping to, to uh, solve the problem or at least correlated with uh, the reward you're going to get at the end. So in Mario, this could be like the further right you go, the more reward you get. You get kind of a, a, an additional reward if you go right. Um, coincidentally, I think in real Mario, this also gives you points, but don't. It, our situation is that the reward is just going to be at the end. You could also say like if you if you kill the or if you if you stomp the the Goombas, one Goomba you stomp, that actually gives you also a bit of reward. Um, in chess, you could say like the more pieces you have, that gives you a bit of reward. If you have more pieces than your opponent, if your opponent loses pieces, um, and you don't and you also get a bit of reward if you get more territory on the board and so on. So these are all things that we know kind of correlate with the end reward. Like because in Mario, for example, the, the, the end of the level is actually on the right. Um, but of course, it's not perfect because sometimes there are situations where you kind of have to go go back, go, and go around something or, or go over something and not immediately go to the right. Uh, as well as in chess, there are good sacrifices that you can make. Um, so these these kind of additional rewards, they hel help, but um, they're not perfect. And the biggest problem with them is they're very domain specific. So a developer of the algorithm, you basically have to know the domain, like Super Mario, and you have to know the goal is on the right. So uh, you have to construct your reward in order to kind of reflect this. Um, and this is, this is very domain specific. Basically, you have to do it for every domain uh, again and again and again in chess you have to know something about chess to play and so on so um, one way around this and this paper pro proposes one method to do this is to introduce an additional reward not based on the domain specifically but based on what they call uh, this curiosity and it's um, specifically curiosity by self-supervised prediction so what does that mean um, the idea is not uh, new in that people have kind of done this before. Um, if, if we go, for example, down here, so here is this kind of doom environment. And um, what you could say is, in my agent, I have kind of a, a little module that's going to predict the future um, so like if I'm if I'm here then I will basically 
choose an action my agent will choose an action like move forward like press the forward key and then I will predict how that's gonna look and of course we we know this is kind of a 3d environment so this probably going to be this th part of the screen is going to be the full screen because you're now closer and so on the perspective changes a little bit um, but basically this is this this should be a learned like a neural network that predicts the future from the state now and the action now and basically the the you can, so you can train this in a, in a supervised fashion because you, you will perform some actions you will collect some data about this so you can uh, learn a network that is going to predict one step into the future basically how the environment will look and then um, and this is by no means kind of a new idea to introduce rewards based on this type of um, learning how the environment acts we've seen this in like the a3c paper um, the original one where the additional reward is something like pixel control where they consider like okay this pixel here how much can I control it by my action? Like, how does my action influence it? How can I predict this and so on? And um, to to learn how to control the pixels on the screen by your actions and to give, give a reward based on that. So that's that's been around this idea. And what this paper here does specifically is they say, well, I'm going to predict the future. And if I am wrong about the prediction, then that gives me a reward and that's that's the curiosity part um, basically it means like if I have a good model of what's going to happen in the future um, and then I predict the future and then I'm wrong it means something new has happened something special um, something that I hadn't expected and therefore um, if the goal is to get the algorithm to explore by itself which is what you need to do when you don't have a reward right when you don't have a reward what you want your algorithm to do is simply to go around and explore and um, in in a sense they're saying okay the way to do this is to go by curiosity which means is to go to actively seek out environments that you haven't that you wouldn't expect basically so it, whenever you don't expect something, that means it's something new. That means you haven't had this experience before, right? Um, and that means that it's kind of a new state to explore. Um, that you, you haven't, you, you have not seen this before. So kind of in absence of any reward, you might as well go where you haven't been before. And that's that's kind of the, the essence. So they outline a number of problems that you might have with this approach um, they they give the example uh, let's f first actually go to what the the model actually looks like so that's here you can see um, this is kind of uh, what they call an intrinsic curiosity module so you have a state here you're in a state you have your policy and your policy gives you an action um, and the action goes to the environment and the environment gives you the next um, state and also the what's called the the, the reward um, they, they call here our e is the extrinsic reward that you get from the environment but they also combine this within so what's called an intrinsic reward that you get from here that you get from the um, curiosity module and that's what we've discussed it kind of tries to assess how new is the state that I'm gonna be in how surprising it is for me so the the thing is that I'm gonna I'm gonna first describe like a, a the model how you would build it and how that gives gets you into problems and then how to fix it uh, so how you would build this is to have this what's called this forward model so the forward model takes the, the action and the current state and it kind of predicts the next state that's in here don't worry about the phi hat right now um, it, it predicts the next state and then you compare this to the what's here to the actual next state you here is a subtract you, you just look at the difference between what you predict the next state is going to be and what the next state really is and that gives you the intrinsic reward the, the more different these are 
the kind of higher the reward. That's what we've discussed. Like how how much different is it from what I've expected? Um, so how does that get you into problems? And the authors give a very um, very good illustrative example of say um, you are in an environment. Um, let's actually go over here. You're in an environment and you have your your screen right. And here is kind of a road that you need to maybe walk after. And here are some leaves in the wind. I'm very bad at drawing leaves. So imagine these are <laughs> leaves and there's wind, right? Like winds coming from here and kind of shaking up these leaves and so on. So if you simply try to predict this entire screen from um, as, as your forward model, what's going to happen is you will never be able to kind of predict how these leaves are going to move because they're basically you can't influence them. No, no part of like, you can predict a bit from the current state, but the action you take has no influence on how these leaves are going to move because they're influenced by the wind. And the wind is kind of this random ish process that um, that, that you you can't control. So the the authors say because of this, the, your algorithm is always going to find these leaves uh, basically interesting, curious, be curious about it because it can't predict them. And we've seen that the, the reward that they model to give an addition is based on how well you cannot predict a certain state. And they say, okay, if, if we do it like this, then the the kind of these things, these random things that we can't influence will always be surprising. And therefore we will always be curious about them. And therefore we will always kind of look at the leaves and be amazed and get reward after reward because we can't predict them. That's not the goal. So what, what they're arguing is that why are these leaves not important um, for curiosity? Because we can't influence them with our actions. Like we can influence where we go on this road because we can kind of move and the road is kind of static, not governed by these random processes. Um, but the leaves, we, we, we would like to discard them. Um, we can't influence them. And therefore, what they say is what we need is an encoder that takes a state and I'm try to delete this annotation. Yep. So we need an encoder here features that takes a state and it outputs features of the state. And then we're not our forward model isn't fed with the state, it's fed with the features of the state. And is not going to output this, the next state as such, but the features of the next state like the it is predict the feature and then we're going to compare that with the, f the features of the true next state. And that's what we compare. So how does, how, how, how does this encoder these features need to look? And they're saying, well, these features should kind of only consider things about the state that are actually dependent on our actions. And they have a, I think a very interesting way of achieving to train such an such an encoder, such a, a, f a feature producing function, in that they say, it's going to be a neural network uh, that we train by this training this so called inverse model. Um, so we take this encoder, and we train this inverse model on top of it, and the inverse model takes the the features of the last state and the new state and is trying to predict this action, this action right here. So this, this is this action, the action we took to get from the old state to the new state. Um, so this inverse model is trained to predict what action was taken to get from the old state to the new state. And by training the encoder, with this inverse model, like training this end to end, you will make the encoder such that it only considers things that are actually relevant to predicting this action. So in the leaves example, it would discard the leaves, um, it will discard anything that you can't influence with your action. And therefore, it will only retain features that are dependent on your action. Uh, I think that's 
quite interesting way to get kind of rid of the irrelevant information that they don't want. And then they can use this encoder to um, to train this forward model and to to essentially get this intrinsic reward. So I find this idea um, quite interesting. And as I said, that the idea of intrinsic reward and curiosity to go for exploration is not new, but I, I think this um, this this kind of approach, and I'm sure it's been around in some variants, but I've just stumbled across this and this is, oh, sorry, this is quite interesting. Um, cool. So we're gonna take a look and you can go about the math of yourself, but they they do these kind of experiments and they corrupt, as you can see, part of the screen with noise here. And they, of course, sh show like, okay, since the noise is not dependent on our action, our features do actually discard this noise, only focus on the part that we can actually influence by our actions. Um, so that's, I think, all in all, pretty interesting. They show, of course, that um, their algorithm then outperforms the kind of baseline of A3C on these sparse reward tasks. And the, the sparser here you can see like the left is like a dense reward and then sparse reward and then very sparse reward. And at some point you see the, the A3C simply doesn't, doesn't do it anymore. But what's also interesting is here you have the ICM in pixels, um, which which kind of means pixel-based curiosity. So where we don't have this encoder, where we simply trying to predict the pixels of the environment. And that works if you have like this kind of sparse reward thing. But if you want the, if you have the very sparse reward, that also fails and you actually need this, this encoder that discards what's not relevant for uh, predicting the actions. Um, yeah, so you can you can take a look at the rest of the paper yourself. I find I find it quite interesting. They analyze how their their agent explore these mazes and things, um, and they have more experiments on like benchmark tasks. So have a look at it, and I'll see you next time.